What's up guys, it's Mike with Shallow Reef and come back at you with another video and today I forgot my mic but I'm gonna go get my green man. Hello beautiful, you're about to make my wife very happy. I lost some footage but it was the footage explaining what I'm doing, why I'm doing it. So this whole video is about how to quarantine a mandarin dragonette and to get it to eat um, frozen bloodworms. And you'll see my trials along the way and what worked and what didn't. I also didn't explain why I am doing a hydrogen peroxide dip for this fish. Now I'm following Humble Fish's protocol, which is um, for every one liter of water, you put five milliliters of hydrogen peroxide. So the only reason why you would do this is for fish that don't really um, hold up very well in copper treatments. So mandarin dragonets do not do well in copper. That's why I'm doing the hydrogen peroxide bath. I'm also keeping another fish in there as a canary in the coal mine because um, the mollies don't really have any resistance to any parasites that could be um, found in salt water. So once I've acclimated to salt water, if the molly ends up getting any type of parasites, then I know that um, the fish is not healthy and then I'll have to do another hydrogen peroxide bath. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add um, two liters of water. Now I have about one liter of tank water that I, the fish can. I have another liter of my water. I'm going to put a liter of my water in and mix the peroxide in there. Um, it's gonna be about five milliliters per liter. So overall I'm gonna have 10 milliliters of uh, hydrogen peroxide. And I have an air bubbler. I'm gonna be running that in there to kind of you know oxygenate the water. So let's get this started. The mandarin is now acclimating. I have two liters of tank water, one liter of his previous water, one liter of his new QT water, and 10 milliliters of hydrogen peroxide in here with an air bubbler going to mix it all up and I've already stirred it. Now the really important thing you need to do is use a food grade container. This is a large food grade Tupperware container. I've had this for, I don't know, a decade. Uh, obviously lost the top to it a long time ago with all the moves, but um, it's served its purpose and it's doing well to acclimate this mandarin. So I have 30 minutes on the timer and when that is up, I'm going to transfer him to his new home. But I also forgot one thing. I need to start hatching brine shrimp again. So I will get that started right now so that he'll have something to eat when he gets in there while I train him to eventually eat Hopefully blood worms that are frozen, then move on to frozen mysis, then hopefully pellets. I'm ambitious, but hopefully if you follow this, you'll know how to acclimate and train a mandarin on how to um, go from copepods to pellets, maybe, and quarantine him and not kill him. Fingers crossed. It's now been 20 minutes, oh, 30 minutes, just kidding. And sorry, I have to catch this boy who wants this fish so bad. Daniel. I love you. All right. It's now been 30 minutes and the fish is ready to go in the quarantine tank. And my little assistant over here has been trying to sabotage it this entire time. So I just gave him a fish net and now he's hanging out, but he's trapped because he locked the door, closed the door behind him. Daniel, let's get out. The Mandarin is acclimated and doing well. The molly is gonna be a canary in the coal mine, and then I decided to get a skunk cleaner shrimp because why not put him in quarantine too? It is now the next day, it's the 4th of July, and it's time to catch this little guy, put him in a breeder box, and see if I can get him to eat um, some blood worms that I have uh, thawed out. And I'm gonna be putting in some brine shrimp, so I know he's gonna pick out the brine shrimp. And then hopefully, after it, if he's been in there for a while, he'll start eating. Let's see if this is gonna work. I trapped him in the Lee's breeder net. You can kind of see him here. And then I'm gonna drop in some brine shrimp and see how he does. Hopefully he eats it. Then once I see him eating a bit, I'm gonna throw in some of those uh, blood worms. Brine shrimp are in. You can see him kind of picking at it. They're kind of just going everywhere. Probably gonna keep him in here for a bit. And then I'm gonna throw in some of those blood worms and hopefully something happens, maybe? I don't know, it might take me a week or two to get him to do it. Nothing yet. 
where he's trying to pick out the blood worm, but I got hope. You can kind of see I've just filled this entire thing with little brine shrimp. It looks like he didn't pick at any of these guys. Sorry, this used to hold a bunch of Kato in it, but whatever. Uh, that's what's floating around in here. But what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to turn the pump back on and kind of let him chill in here. See what happens. You know, not going to hurt anything. Man, look at those brine shrimp everywhere in here. I know he's going to get tons of food. Think about calling him Mando the Mandalorian. Or Mando the Mandarin, I should say. What do you think? Mando for this guy? Day two on how to train your dragonet. And I probably chased him around and stressed him out all throughout this little tank for almost a minute or two before getting him in this acclimation box, or breeder box, I should say. So I'm probably gonna wait a bit before feeding him just so he calms down. And oh, we'll see if he eats bloodworms on day two. Day five, and I've stopped using the breeder box because he wasn't eating in the breeder box. Poor Mando, sorry, a kid just touched all over this fish tank so it's blurry. But I have some blood worms down there and he's not really picking at them. Day five, no success. I'll come back at ya. Hopefully in another five days and he'll be eating blood worms. I hope, I don't know. I got enough supply for whatever, but these little brine shrimp in here are amazing. This little uh, brine shrimp hatchery, you could not quarantine a man, <laughs> a Mandalorian, a Mandarin without having uh, that brine shrimp hatchery. I, I love it, it's so easy. Why are you gonna pick at it? You did not pick at it. Day five, I think he's looking at the blood worm, but he hasn't tried it, he's just picking off the baby brine shrimp. I've kind of given up the breeder box because I think it stresses him out and it's probably not too conducive to feeding because I have to chase him around this 24 gallon tank. But overall, I don't know, I'm not super optimistic on him eating, but we'll see. He hasn't picked up the blood worms yet. Day 17 of trying to train this dragonet and it is not working. So I switched over to frozen brine shrimp because I'm feeding live brine shrimp. Switched up the 14 day mark because 14 days was not working. Putting him in the little breeder box and feeding him might have been stressing him out. It wasn't working, but just not really getting him to eat. I'm gonna keep on trying and see what happens. Day 24. <laughs> yes, day 24 of attempting to feed this mandarin frozen. So this is, move it, Molly, okay. So this is about day nine or 10 of the frozen brine shrimp. So I know he was eating brine shrimp, the live brine shrimp, but I'm trying to get him to go to frozen. Come on, really you're gonna hide back there? All right, whatever. So. I've seen him pick at the frozen brine shrimp three or four times. That doesn't mean he's necessarily eating it, that just means he kind of picks at it when he kind of feels like. Oh man, let's see if I can catch it on camera. It is now day 25 and I saw him eat one blood worm. Another one? Maybe? Maybe? Come on. Oh, there's none on that side. I'm going to dump more blood worms in and see what happens. Come on baby, eat it. Eat it. Do it. Come on, Mando. Get it on camera. You're right there, do it. I swear to God. The anticipation's killing me. I need to catch it on camera. He ate one. There's a blood worm right in front. Come on. Urgh. All right, anyway, well, you can take my word for it or not. He ate one blood worm. All right, come on, eat for the camera. I'm trying to catch you eating for two days. Yes! He ate. You can see blood worms. It took, I don't know, 20 days of blood worms. And then uh, oh, about almost 10 days of uh, frozen brine shrimp. And then back to blood worms. Eat another one. Come on, do it for the camera. Oh, another one. All right. This is considered a success after nearly 30 days. Okay, good job, buddy. It has finally happened, guys. That mandarin 
is now in the acclimation box and it's gonna stay in there for a couple days. Now it's been in QT for a month and five days and it took three weeks for this buddy to finally eat frozen bloodworms. The plan is to continue to feed him frozen bloodworms and probably put some pellets in here too, see if he picks at it. I don't know if he will, but also to keep putting the frozen brine shrimp in here. Now, hopefully that will allow him to kind of, uh, what, did I say frozen brine shrimp? Live brine shrimp, to put the live brine shrimp in here. That will hopefully allow him to bulk up a little bit more and give the fish a couple days to, you know, get accustomed to him. He doesn't look too thin. He looks pretty healthy. So I'm pretty happy with how everything's gone and we'll see how it works out. Today is the day, it's been three days in the little acclimation box. And he's done really well, he's eaten the blood worms. Um, I tried to get him to eat pellets, but it wasn't really working for him. So I'm gonna release him into the tank and hope everything goes well. Aren't those like everyone's famous last words? Let's hope it goes well. Yeah, all right, there's one magnet down. Two magnets down, and we will release him. See if I can keep it in frame. Come on, buddy, get out. Come on, Mando. There he goes. Beautiful, but look at this puppy. He is beautiful. Mando, if you die because of fish aggression, I will be so, so mad. Go eat all those copepods. Looking beautiful as always. All right guys, so that was my experience with acclimating a Dragonette, quarantining it, and getting him to eat, um, oh please don't mess with him, and getting him to eat blood worms. So I tried to get him to eat some pellets when he was in the acclimation box. I was also feeding him um, some of the live brine shrimp. That didn't seem to work too well trying to switch into pellets, but he did really well on the blood worms. So I might try to turn off the pumps and you know, give him some blood worms every now and again but there are more than enough copepods in this tank to sustain him. Dude, don't you mess with him, Royal Grama. I will beat you. Don't you do it. Don't mess with him. This is my wife's favorite fish, by the way. That's why. We can't mess with Mando. Well, that's all I got for you this time, guys. If you like what you see here and you want to see more, hit the subscribe button to see more. And as always, don't forget to comment if you like how I'm doing things. Give me some suggestions on how I can make things better. And I will see you next time.